Well, here we are for just a quick thank you clip to all those brands out there that test and prove by forecasting well in advance for an entire year, let alone up to 10 years as we do. So a big thank you for all those brands out there that forecast and more importantly, get outside and take photograph and film footage of those forecasts to test and prove that they are real. And if there's something wrong, we learn that and then share that with others. But if it's correct, we share why as well. So this is a big thank you based on all of the photographs and film footage received because the night before New Moon Day all the way to the dawn and sunrise of the pagan day of Sunday, April 17th, people shared pictures. And this great or excellent shots from Yara. Thank you for all you do, Yara, and these photographs in your area. Thank you, Cruz and Kenny in California, USA, for also testing and proving your forecast and knowing that at the dawn, Sunday, April 17th, even on the west coast of the USA, uh, it was definitely the first day of the first month. And all the way to New Zealand, to Alan and his family and all his excellent etymological work on word studies and names. Alan, thank you. Uh, you've become a great help and resource in that arena of study and for this photograph as well, proving even in your area at the dawn on the pagan day of Sunday, April 17th, it was the head of months or the first day of the beginning of months scripturally. And then thank you uh, to Anne, Andre and his family in South Africa for doing the very same thing. Over the years, you and your family have been nothing but joy in regards to our scriptural study assemblies. I always look forward to hearing from you, uh, whether it's on email, Skype, uh, and all of the platforms that we communicate together and assemble on. Thank you, Andre and family. And then over to the wonderful couple, uh, Bobby and Jack in the USA. Look at the Ursa Major shot they got the night before New Moon Day. Again, another sign showing in its upside down position, pouring out its water, announcing that it's spring. And they also helped to verify that at the dawn on Sunday, April 17th, in their location in the USA, it was also the first day of the first month. Over to Philo in Barbados, the Caribbean, same deal. Philo, thank you for all that you share. Uh, it's so scripturally encouraging. Thank you. And of course, over to Deanna, Fred Clifton Park, her shots of the dawn and the moon. And again, verifying in that location that on the pagan day of Sunday, April 17th, commencing at dawn, was the first day of the first month. And then as well, Cynthia in Texas, USA. Cynthia, you have been nothing but a great help to me and my better three quarters, Paula, this year. Especially with the apps, you're really raising my game and studying more in a detailed fashion, uh, meaning the forecasts are getting better and better. And uh, I'm improving in regards to presenting and visualizing them as well. And more importantly, for your superb efforts in getting outside and testing and proving those forecasts in creation with these excellent, wonderful shots, proving also that at the dawn, uh, commencing at the dawn on the pagan day of Sunday, April 17th, it was new moon day in your area as well. And then, uh, of uh, course, over to Tara. Uh, Tara, your shots, always with the stars. You have, uh, again, raised my game on how to use cameras and uh, my discussions now and vice versa with my better three quarters, Paula, of 35 years has been wonderful in regards to knowing how to film it, when to film it, how to use other tools to get out there to know when you can actually visualize them with clear skies. And uh, so this is great. Your shot with Arcturus, also uh, additional witnesses proving why at the dawn of Sunday, April 17th was New Moon Day. Just superb. I look forward to working with you this year on our project. And then over to uh, Singapore, Asia, Willabel, uh, your work, same thing. Your ability to get the stars, in this case, proving that the sign, the celestial sign of a fully restored moon, and the sun being in Aries, and the fully restored moon being between Arcturus and Spica, uh, was just amazing. And um, showing the uh, further proof of the position of the foot of the preacher in a triangulation standpoint. So this shot is, you know, it's wonderful. It's uh, the Boku shot of Abib this year, I would say. So well done. I look forward to working with you on our project this year as well and all that you do and share. 
uh, forecasting and then getting outside and testing and proving that forecast. And then finally, a big thank you to my better three quarters, Paula, of almost, we're hitting our 34th anniversary, uh, full speed ahead to 35, and uh, all of your support. And I apologize in front of everybody for always dragging you out in the winter months in that cold but uh, thank you for hanging in there for me and getting shots like this because I just do not know how to use that camera to the extent that you do. So thank you, honey, for everything you do, the children that you have provided us and the way you have raised them scripturally. It's been nothing but a joy, honey. So what did we actually film? So why did we know that the night, Friday, April 15th of that pagan time period going into the 16th, was only the 29th day of the 12th month. Well, again, as we have shared on the other videos, the moon was not in the house between speak and the foot of the preacher. That's why we knew it was going to be a 29th day or 12th month. We knew that emphatically. And I am going to start to share the constellation art on my presentations. Everyone is now uh, more than skilled enough to know that you don't see constellation art in the Shamayim. You don't need to memorize constellation art. But I'm going to do this out of sincere scriptural love for all of the work all these Bereans, including myself and my wife, are doing with the elderly and the disabled. They can't get outside. So they've been using this, and it's been a great tool. So again, it was on the going into the evening of uh, the pagan day of Friday, April 15th, and into the 16th. It was only the 29th day of the 12th month because we use the sun, moon, and stars, not just a piece of one of those. So, and why we knew that on the pagan day of Saturday, April 16th, was the 30th day going into the 17th. We knew that because the moon entered the house uh, going past speak or in alignment to it to the foot of the preacher. So that moon can be anywhere close to speak or close to the foot of the preacher the night before Abib, uh, a first day, first month celestial event, because the sun is in alignment with Aries. Orion is going to be in the west along with Pallades and the morning star known as the Lamb or Tele or Hamal. So and Ursa Major before the midnight time period be here. It'll turn and go completely upside down just like the picture that Bobby and Jack uh, took in the USA. So make a long story short, it was that simple. This is why we knew there was a 30 day month 10 years ago based on the forecast. All we did was verify that forecast with film and photograph footage uh, all over Earth, and thus the reason why even the Stellarium art shows that quite clearly. So, uh, as well, uh, the moon stayed in between the foot of the preacher <coughs> and the star known as Spica or Abib, as we can see in this picture, all the way to the dawn, which announced uh, the first day of the first month. This is the celestial event. And again, all four night watches. Okay, let's look at that again. So, when the moon is in proximity to the star known as Abib or Spica and the foot of the preacher, it's in the house, so to speak, we knew this was why we were going to have a 30th day month. Now, there are some years that the 12th month can be 29 days, but this sign will still be there. Even in a 13th month event, which is amazing, this is the sign. This is what happens where the sun is with, just as the historian Josephus stated, the uh, sun would be with Aries, the lamb, and uh, the moon, obviously, is in this position the night before New Moon Day. And as we can see here, this is sunset, and we go all the way to the dawn, and the moon hangs in there. And with a triangulation system that many use uh, with our studies in our YouTube channel, this is clearly uh, easy to film because Arcturus is the brightest uh, star in the northern hemisphere. So we're going to use it, obviously. So that is the first day of the first month. So we have the night before and the previous night to that as well. So two nights. We forecast every night, but this should be a great explanation. So what about photographic proof after a beep? Do we do that as well? Well, we do, don't we? Because all the way to sunrise, we film that too. We go and get that witness. Now, the moon greeting the sun at sunrise is not the end-all do 
do witness, as some regrettably still will say, but that's okay. They will grow into the four night watch view. They will not rob themselves of all the wonderful witnesses that Yahuwah provides. And so we're at peace with that. It's a journey for all of us. We are all in the same boat at one time or another. So that's what this looks like. And there again, uh, even at the sunrise, the moon hung in there between Spica and the foot of the preacher, Arcturus, that triangulation, so to speak. And if I put in the ground, this is what you would have seen outside. And obviously you couldn't see Hamal because the sun would brighten that out. And you wouldn't see Rijiel Wall because the sun would drown that out, just as this visual would show. So that's simple, right? So let's go over this quickly. So on the 29th day of the 12th month, this is around the moonrise time period here. And uh, there's sunset, if you will. And... This is on the pagan day of April, or Friday, April 15th, going into the 16th, which is still the 29th day of the 12th month on the celestial clock and calendar. So the next day wasn't going to be New Moon Day. All the witnesses weren't in perfect alignment, especially this moon wasn't yet fully restored at this time period on the 15th. It only restored on the 16th in various places. It fully recovered everywhere on the 16th after the dawn on the 16th. It fully recovered, letting us know that the 17th would be New Moon Day. Over and above the fact the moon was not in a proper alignment. It wasn't going to rule the night with Spica and the foot of the preacher in its house, so to speak, let alone the triangulation with Arcturus. But the next night, all of that was in play, as we can see. So this is why we did ha indeed have a 30th day on the 12th month on the pagan day of Saturday, April 16th. So the moon hung in there the whole night through, as we know. We covered this in these two scriptural study videos if you haven't seen this already. So what if we looked at after a beep? So here we are. I went out last night and this is Sunday, April 17th, well after the dawn. So you're still in the first day of the first month, but going into the midnight turns into Monday, April 18th. And at the dawn, that's the second day of the month of a beep. Well, take a look at the moon. It's no longer in the house. This is why we know we're going into a second day of the first month of Abib. If you do every day, if you forecast every day and then go outside and test and prove that, these things would be basic. If you don't, well then this saying applies. If you don't know what you don't know, you don't know. And again, we don't judge anybody for that. We didn't know this for many years. So now we do, now we share it. That's all this is. So, and there's the Stellarium art. And as you can see, the moon is now heading towards the scales, so to speak. And that's another study altogether. So this is moonrise and onto the first watch. So I showed you uh, the sunset time period. Now we're going to the moonrise time period into the first watch. So all night long for a second night, so to speak, going in there towards the second day, I'm sorry, should have said it that way. This is where the moon's going to be. It's no longer going to be in the house, so to speak, between Spica, the foot of the preacher, or triangulated, as some say, with Arcturus. And I knew this because I went outside again at 11.30, or in military time, 23.30, and this is where it was going to be. So again, the moon is now past. We now know the next day will be the second day of the first month of Abib. So, photographic proof. Put my mouth where the money is. So there is the Stellarium art. Well, if I took a camera, what would that look like? Well, I went outside and there we go. There's Arcturus. There's a beeb. It's past it. Uh, and now, and uh, as we can see, that's what it looks like. And if I put the photograph in, that's what we're looking at. So it's easy to film. You got to get your camera angled right. I, I took this myself. My wife is way better at this than I am. But as you can see, very easy to prove. So again, photographic proof. Just don't do the forecast. Get outside every day with that forecast and see what you can actually film, let alone photograph. So even in my backyard, I took the same shot. So there's the moon. Again, Sunday, April 17th at 23... 30 between the second and the third watch there's that shot there's the one from the front of the house and here's the shot from that tree ursa major 
right there. If I put that on top, there's Ursa Major, same thing. That's the tree in the front of my house, looking straight up. Again, there is no need to strive with the flesh. What you're striving with or contending with as a noble Berean, what you're pursuing is, is, is proof. So here it is. What you do with it is up to you and the Father of Lights, uh, just as it is for me. So I'm going to trust this. Some people say you can't forecast, but uh, we disagree because we can test and prove that forecast. And if man makes a mistake on any of these programs, that will be flushed out, which is also another value-added feature of this approach. So again, uh, there's Ursa Major, there's Ursa Major. So you can't miss, like it's, it's not rocket science. But this is the benefit and joy of understanding why the Book of Jubilees, the Book of Hanok, talked about Ursa Major, let alone Job, and how it actually operates, as we've covered on so many scriptural study videos. And many people will reject this, outright reject this. But meanwhile, navigators on the open seas and the oceans, let alone camel trains, in deserts for thousands and thousands of years have relied on this. So we're going to do the same moving forward, regardless of some of the silliness that continues. So again, on the pagan day of Friday, April 15th, this was 8.04 my time, and as you can see, the moon was not in the house. It wasn't going to be the night before New Moon Day. It's that simple with the sun and the other stuff uh, in regards to percent illumination, position to true north, uh, and all the rest of the forecasting valuable fractions of light or evidence or witnesses, if you will. And again, most people will reject them. They're very stubborn, like I was over 15 years ago. I said to people, I'm not going to forecast. What's the value of that? What's the value of that piece of paper? And then when I started doing it and then going outside like this with the photographs, uh, it, it changed my tune, so to speak, like many others all over. So it, have patience with the folks that are still on that stage like some of us were in the past. So here we are, Saturday, April 16th at 8.04, Stellarium Art. We know the moon's going to rule the night, the whole night through, as Hanok would say, and with the right stars the night before the first day of Abib. And then, of course, why we knew last night when I went out on the pagan day of Sunday, April 17th at uh, 11.30 or 9.30 at night here, as you can see. I went outside here first, and then I went back out at 11.30, 23.30, as you can see here, and I started putting all the photographs to it. So you can have photographic proof of your forecasts. And again, if man makes a mistake on any of those programs, you can correct man. The neat thing is, is Yahuwah provides this information every day, and you, as a result, can forecast in advance. As long as you use the stars scripturally, let alone other Maseroth, uh, with the sun, moon, and stars during the day with moonrise, moonset, let alone sunrise, sunset, and it's noon high time period, and then all the way into the four night watches, especially when the uh, Messiah Yahushua, our only teacher, stated that you know, we do not hide a, a light under a, a basket, but we place it on a lampstand for all in the house to see. So now you know the sign in the house when that moon is a light on a lampstand between the star known as speaker or a bee in the foot of the preacher. And if you triangulate, you know the position of Arcturus. And as such, you know the position at this time, right here with Ursa Major in its upside down position, which everyone got photographs last night. I only showed you a couple. I showed you Bobby and Jack from the US. We get many photographs. And I apologize for the folks that I didn't get all your shots in here. I do my best to put them on the community page and in the videos and in the assemblies but I can't get them all, I can't keep up actually, but keep sending them and share them amongst yourselves to further encourage others to forecast and go test and prove or get photographic proof of that forecast. Now here's the thing, you can forecast with a human watch. That's a human watch. Now there's two points I'm gonna make. So we know years in advance when it's gonna be 12 midnight on any given day. We can forecast that and then we can go outside and test and prove that. That's a human watch. So some people are proposing in their various ways, whether I'm dealing with 
uh, some of the Islamic world religious folks in the Middle East or some of the Judaic folks, some in the Middle East, let alone here in North America. They're saying, oh, no, you can't forecast Yahuwah's clock. I'm going, really? Well, why can you forecast with a human clock? Isn't Yahuwah greater than human beings? Think about that for a moment. Let that sink in. Now, the challenge with human mindsets is the starting point of a day is, is when all three witnesses are at the 12. While in Yahuwah's clock, the sun on the first day of the first month is in alignment with Aries. The moon is in its position as it's restoring itself. And it's in proximity to the star known as Spica Abib in the foot of the preacher. And if you triangulate uh, uh, Arcturus or Ash. So there are more than one visual. It's not all in one number like humans have. And as humans, we have this desire to dumb things down. Regrettably, that's what a human clock has done. But you still can forecast with it. This clock, on the other hand, with the stars and the sun and moon, is much more detailed because Yahuwah is awesome. That's why we always say have a awesome day. So when you know the stars and how they work as a clock in alignment with the sun and the moon, then all this comes together quite nicely. And thus the reason why we forecast in advance. And this is why when somebody says to us, you have belief, but I have works. And the person further says, show me your belief without your works. And then I always respond now, well, I'm going to show you my belief by my works. I'm going to forecast in advance. And then I'm going to get photographic proof of that forecast, not just in my area, but all over earth and share how Yahuwah aligns us. Now, there are going to be some people that say, no, 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 don't forecast, don't even go outside and test and prove. And it's impossible because new moon days can be on different days and so can Sabbaths and feast days. Well, wait a minute. I came out of that. The Catholic Church said, hey, if you're Christian, worship on Sunday. If you're Jewish or a seven-day Adventist, do a Saturday. And if you're Muslim, do a Friday. They really don't care, do they? As long as you're on their calendar. Now think about that for a moment. There are presumptuous ones in all forms of world religions, let alone their offshoots. Even in the Hebrew roots movement, they want to rule over you. They're presumptuous. But again, my designer, my father of lights is greater than man. If I can forecast with a human watch, I can certainly forecast with his. So I'm certainly not going to stop forecasting. In fact, we're going to turn it up. And this is why we can do a whole year in advance, up to nine to 10 years in advance, if not farther, let alone go backwards. And the folks that you know are arguing this, they're doing the very same thing themselves with the very same apps. Kind of hypocritical, but again, have peace with them. Love them. Have patience with them. The transaction of this dialogue is, it's not to be right as individuals. The transaction is to learn together as one what is right, because it's only the Father of Lights that unites us. It's not one human being or one world religion or one group. Again, it's the father of lights. And here's the bottom line. The Messiah, Yahushua, when he returns, he's going to restore all of this. So we on this YouTube channel and the people and Bereans that do this work, we're not teachers, we're not leaders, we're not pro, you know, prophetic in any way, so to speak. We're not prophets. Again, we're just Berean study students striving to become noble. And thus the reason why we forecast. And thus the reason why we get outside and test and prove all of this. So in closing, Thank you, thank you, and thank you, because we got photograph proof of the days before Abib with the sun, moon, and stars, the day and the night before Abib with the sun, moon, and stars, and we get the uh, days and nights after Abib. So again, just do the forecast and go outside and test and prove it. Save the dialogue, save what is called always learning and never coming to the truth. Just do the work and the truth will expose itself because you're not relying on a man. You're trusting Yahuwah with his sun, moon, and stars. But bottom line and in closing, thank you for all those brains out there that do this. We look forward to the various projects that we have in scriptural name studies, scriptural word studies, scriptural law studies, and of course the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah. So, have a yasum week, and if I don't speak to some of you before Passover on Loaven Bread and uh, First Fruits, have a yasum spring feast time period. All the best, everyone. Have a yasum day.